Good morning. Welcome to Central. We are so glad that you're here with us in person in our auditorium right now or watching online. We are excited that you're here. I have the pleasure to introduce our co-host today, Roy Alande. Thank you for being here, Roy. It's great to be here. It's it always is. a pleasure to be in the presence of such majesty. Oh, I appreciate it. And uh, <laughs> it's a fantastic Sunday. Looking at everyone coming in, the amazing weather. It's been really nice weather this week as well. Nice yeah. and warm. Helpful for my African bones. Just, you know, <laughs> just just give me the right vibes. So, yeah. Fall, it's... fall is just accommodating you. Oh, right? yeah. 100%. Yeah. So, thank you. It's like, thank oh, you Roy's here. Let's, let's warm up a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very helpful. It's very helpful. Oh, awesome. But seeing folks come in, it's going to be a great Sunday together. Hey, today we're going to be taking communion. So those of you who are on location coming in, if you haven't already got an emblem for communion today, make sure you grab one. Those of you at home, take a quick sec, run to the kitchen, grab some juice, maybe a cracker or some bread so you can take communion together with us today. Yeah, and if you are watching online, wherever you're watching right now, maybe YouTube, Facebook, or church online platform, make sure you share this with your online community. We'd love to get the word out of what's happening, what God's doing in our community, uh, this message of hope and purpose and truth in Jesus. Uh, also, if you're in person, you can interact with us in a very similar way. Take a picture of what's going on today uh, and tag us at Central CC, share it on Instagram, Facebook. We love to get the word out, get some momentum about what's happening here at Central. Yeah, I mean, come take, grab a picture with us too. Yeah, All for it. Totally, All for it. Totally. <laughs> Those of you who are new here, thanks so much for coming out for the first time. Uh, if you're in person, just want to let you know, we'd love to just have someone say hello to you and connect with you sometime today. So when the experience is over, head out the auditorium and you'll see a connections wall with folks wearing blue shirts or lanyards. I'd love to just say hey and welcome you. If you're online, firstly, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, just go in, type, you know, wherever you're watching from around the world. We know we have folks from all over. Uh, and also, we'd love to welcome you online if this is your first time we have a chat box there for you to just say hey we have great hosts as well if you need prayer online please click and request prayer we'd love to pray with you and also you can text us 905-937-5610 yeah shout out to pastor mario who's on there online right now uh give him a shout out let him know what's going on and ask him if you have any questions as well uh, I just want to let you know that if you would like to extend your uh, worship today through giving and participating in what God's doing in and through our community uh, and by by being a part of uh, partnering with us financially, lots of ways you can do that. Centralcc.ca slash give. Kind of you can get set up with your giving. Uh, mm -hmm. One-time donation, monthly, regular gifting. Uh, also out in the lobby here, there's a giving kiosk. There's also a tip tap station. Lots of different ways you can give. We just want to say thank you so much much for your generosity because it really is you that makes us able to do this and help connect people to God. Yeah, 100%. The giving that you that you do week in week out enables us to fulfill our vision and our vision here at Central is to connect people to God and to others. You know, we believe by meeting God, knowing who he is, your life is transformed and so many of us have gone through that. So whether you're on your, your faith journey, uh, this is what we're here for. And one of the ways in which we help to connect you with others is through groups. Groups are really a, a, a central part of what we do here at Central and there's four different types of groups. There's all set up for you. Uh, so if you're interested in groups, head to centralcc.ca slash groups or you can actually come out to the connections wall again and just speak to someone, get some more information. Word on the street is there is Christmas groups oh. coming. <laughs> and I, oh, I don't know exactly what that's going to be all about, but I'm picturing Christmas sweaters, some mince pies, like yeah. that whole vibe, which maybe mince pies are not a thing in Canada. I, I, don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's like a, a, a knitting group with like hey, knit, yeah. knit, knit a Christmas scarf. That's, to give to your, I don't, I don't know what's going on. But I'm interested. I'm, yeah. but, but before we get into Christmas, we want to talk about what's happening here at Central tonight, 68 p.m. And our parking lot is trunk or treat. Mm -hmm. We've got over 30 cars uh, that are going to be decorated to the nines. Some of the designs are absolutely incredible. Yeah. So you're going to want to check, come check them out. You can walk through. There's going to be food. There's a barbecue to support community crew. For five dollars, you get a hot dog, bag of chips, a pop. Skip the dinner. Ca the ca yeah, skip come. dinner. Don't even, don't even bother with dinner. Come on over here. Also, the cafe is going to be open for you to make purchases as well. Everything that was sold tonight for food is uh, going to support 
support community crew, and they um, support thousands of students uh, every week here in Niagara mm -hmm. Region by providing them lunches when they wouldn't otherwise have access to it's food. Incredible. And so uh, come out, be a part. We also really want to encourage you to invite your friends, invite your family, let people know what's going on. There's going to be bouncy castles here in the lobby. There's going to be uh, trunk or treating. There's going to be candy. There's going to be food. There's going to be tons of stuff going on. It's worth an invite. So make sure you pass that along and so that people can be here and enjoy it with us. So it's one of our best events of the year. 100%. And so uh, I also just want to say if the, if you want to get connected about anything, you have any questions, please just reach out to us. You can text our number, go to centralcc.ca slash connect. If you're here in person, go to the connections wall, uh, chat with our online hosts. We just love that you're here. We want to make sure that you get connected today. Yeah, thanks so much for being here today. But it's going to be a great Sunday together. So let's, for those on location, head into the term. Our experience is about to begin. where God's creativity is on display in this place we call home. A place where his provision is in our places of work and play. Where community is worth fighting for. We see a place where his beauty is in the diversity of those who choose to live here. Where trust is forged. We see a place where his goodness is found in the kindness of neighbors and friends. Where purpose is reclaimed. And as the church, we are in the center of what he is doing in this region. place where faith is our anchor. We are a place where truth is champion. We are a place where hope is our focus. We are a place where love always Good morning. If you're able, why don't you stand? I'd love for you to join me in worship together. Why don't we put our hands together?
a few moments we are going to partake together of communion sometimes it's called the Lord's Supper or the table of the Lord because it was initiated by Jesus himself on the night before he gave his life on the cross he gathered with his disciples and said I have longed to share this last meal with you and this is the way I want you to remember me when you take this communion do it as a remembrance of what the Lord has done. There are some things we should remember, some things we need to remember, and sometimes we have little methods that we remind ourselves. Like sometimes we tie a ribbon or a string on our finger. I just wish I could remember what I was supposed to remember. <laughs> in uh, the month of February every year we put on poppies it's to remind us to remember those who gave their lives the men and the women who sacrificed so that we could enjoy the freedoms that we experience today when Joshua crossed the river Jordan on dry ground they built a cairn of 12 stones and when they were asked why did you, are you doing this the answer was so that when our children ask, what do these stones mean? We say they are there to remind us of the good things that God has done, to remind us of the deliverance that God gave when he brought us out of bondage, out of Egypt. So Jesus said, this is one of the ways that I want you to remember me and to remember my death on your behalf. So if you're a follower of Jesus this morning, we ask you to participate with us. If you have, did not receive the little cup as you were coming in, our hosts are going to come at this time. Maybe just raise your hand and they'd be happy to serve you. If you're a guest with us this morning, we are so glad you're here. But we would ask that you just observe as we partake together of this little ceremony. Now, it's a little delicate sometimes, a little difficult to open these, but there's actually two layers of cellophane on the top, and if you open the top layer, it will reveal a little wafer, and we're gonna take that, and it's gonna remind us of the body of Jesus that was broken. The Apostle Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 in the Bible, gives us the teaching on the Lord's Supper. And he says, For I have received from the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the very same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks to his Father in heaven, he broke it, and he said, This will represent my body, which was going to be broken for you on the cross. And so this morning we partake of this little wafer as a remembrance of the life that Jesus gave for us so he died so that we could live, and we give thanks to him this morning as we partake. Let's take the wafer together. And then Paul goes on to say in the same way, after they had had their meal together, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new agreement or the new covenant that I'm going to make with you. I will seal it with my own precious blood. So if you could open that at this time Paul said this represents the shed blood of Jesus because the Bible says what can wash away my sin it's nothing but the blood of Jesus it's his blood that cleanses us purifies us in the sight of God and so with thanksgiving in our hearts we participate this morning of that which represents the shed blood blood of our Lord let's partake together Thank you. 
And now, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the great sacrifice that the Lord Jesus was, made, was willing to make on our behalf. And we thank you that because he died, we can live. And because he rose again, we shall spend eternity in his presence. Father, we give you thanks this morning for this amazing gift. And we have remembered to remember. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to invite you, you know what, if you feel like you want to sit and reflect on this next song, or if you want to stand and join us, I'll leave that up to you. We're going to sing about the Father's love. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure. That he should give his only son To make a wretch his treasure How great the pain of searing loss The father turns his face away As wounds which mother chose in Bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders.
we thank you so much for the sacrifice that we take this time to remember the cost the infinite love that you received for Christ from God that, that, that you were willing to break that that you became sin so that we could have righteousness in you God and we have a choice to make in the midst of all the chaos in the midst of everything that's going on in the midst of the fear and the uncertainty we know this for sure that you are faithful and true I pray that we hang on to that God I pray that we seek that out, God. You are so worthy. We praise you, God. In your name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning. How are you doing? All right. That's like 10%. Are you okay? I'm going to help you out. Look at the person next to you and just think, they love me so much. How are you doing now? Oh, okay. I love it. All right. Well, if they don't love you, we love you. So you're good. All right. I want to start with a question today as we conclude our series entitled Broke. Uh, we've been breaking a lie that our culture perpetuates that says you're broke, um, you'll always be broke, and we're learning how to find freedom. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about money, but more about your life. So when you think about your life, do you ever wonder if what you're doing really matters? Yeah, I'm not talking about right now, maybe you're in a good space, you're comfortable, but I'm talking about tomorrow morning, when you have to wake up, maybe early in the morning, and rush off to a job maybe that you don't like, or go to school that you don't want to go to, or be in a situation or a relationship that's strained. Uh, maybe your financial situation is difficult, and maybe you like feel like you're just working so hard and you're wondering, right, does it even matter? Like, do you ever get to the end of the day and you're like, what just happened today? Why did I do all that stuff? And who cares? It's a really good question. But the other part about it is, how do you know? what matters, like, and who gets to define what matters? Is it society that tells you whether your life matters or not? Is it yourself? Who, what is the metric for success when it comes to this issue? So in this question, Jesus is gonna answer it for us today because his disciples were asking the same question. So we just celebrated the death and resurrection of Jesus, but Jesus is about to die. And the disciples are walking with him and he knows that they're not ready for this they're not ready at all and so they're wondering okay Jesus we literally have left everything for you everything they had left their family their friends their jobs and they thought in their mind that Jesus was going to establish an earthly kingdom and that was good news because if he became the king well you know they were going to get some you know reward out of that they were going to be like his right hand man they were going to be you know whatever premiers whatever they were going to be called i don't know directors of things they were going to be given portfolios and so in their mind it was like yeah that matters yeah it was worth it yeah we gave up a lot of stuff but man look at where we are today but jesus needs to prepare them for the fact that that's not going to happen as a matter of fact as, as he dies it's going to be the end of everything they hoped for. All their confirmation bias is about to be shattered, and they're going to ask this question like, well, what did we do that all for then? Did it matter? We gave up everything for you, and now you're gone. And Jesus is going to help them realign their worldview, like he's going to do for a lot of us today. Realign our worldview on what really matters, and what are we doing with our time and our talent and our treasure, and what should we invest in? 
What really makes a difference? What metric should we use to say this was a successful day or not? And so if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. We're going to start reading in verse 14. So in Matthew 25, uh, verse 14, Jesus is going to tell a parable. And in this parable, I'm going to, I'm going to help you out. Um, he's the man going on a journey. Jesus is. He's the master. And the servants are all of us. So any one of us who follow Jesus, we are the servants in this story. So it's pretty easy to understand that part of it. So it says again, it'll be like a man going on a journey. Jesus knows that in just a few short days, he is going to die. And they're going to feel abandoned. They're going to feel like he's left them. So then he called his servants and he entrusted his wealth to them. And again, we're, talk, we're going to talk about wealth in the sense of what God thinks about wealth. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. So let's just do a quick review of what we've learned so far in this series called Broke um, in order to catch us up to where we're going to end today. Today I want to talk about investing, uh, but maybe not in the way that you thought. Uh, If you came for a financial seminar, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, I'm going to talk about investing your life in what really matters. But in week number one, we explored this idea that in order to break this mindset of being broke, you got to test it. And by that we meant test God, test God's way. We learned that money is really about trust, who or what you trust. And it's very easy to figure that out because it's what you spend your money on. So who do you trust? And we learned that if you trust God, His way, He promises that He will provide all that you need. Not necessarily all that you want because actually the things that you want might actually hurt you. So we learned, test it. This isn't just about money, it's about trust. Who or what do you trust? Then in week two, we learn, but you got to learn it, (laughs) that money isn't just about trust, it's also about time. And we don't think about it this way, but anytime you purchase something, you're exchanging valuable time for that commodity. You worked for that money. That represents so many hours of your life. And the question you have to ask is, was it worth it? You got to learn principles to guide your priorities around your money. And then last week, we talked about give it. We learned that money is actually about generosity. That you either live with a closed fist, this is a a permanent way to stay broke, or you open up your hands. You let God fill with all the good things. We learned that everything is a gift from God and you use that. Generosity reciprocates generosity. But today I wanna talk to you about investing. (laughs) And maybe not in the way you thought. So in this story, The master goes on a journey and he entrusts his servants with these bags of gold. Now, I'll be honest with you, I think this is a terrible translation in the English um, because immediately you think about money, but that's not the word used in the Greek. Or it's translated talents in some of your versions of the Bible. And so that's closer, but we think of a skill set. So it's a skill that God gives us. So there's something, a commodity that we have. But actually the Greek word is talaton. And yes, we get our English word talent from it, but it means something much deeper, actually something more powerful. Here's the reality. It's not about money and it's not even about your skill set. This word literally was a weight. Talaton was a, a weight. It could be used for gold most often and that's why it's used in that way in some translations. But it could be a weight of silver, it could be anything. It was a weight, something that was entrusted. And as I, as I read that, I got thinking about that. We may not have a lot of gold, but we all have responsibility. Every one of us in this room, every one of you watching online, you have been given a certain amount of responsibility. And that has been entrusted to you. So if, if you are in a relationship with somebody, that is a weight you carry. Uh, if you have a family, if you are an employer, if you have opportunity in any area, that is your talent. God has given you opportunities every day, even when you don't see it. So you have an opportunity when you go to school tomorrow to make a difference for good. You have an opportunity when you go home today to be nice to that neighbor who's not nice to you. You have an opportunity to be loving to your kids and your spouse. You have an opportunity to go to work and be the best employee you could possibly be. So then the question is, well, why would I do that? Well, 
because God has entrusted that to you. Well, I didn't want it. It doesn't matter. I wanted that one. I wanted the five talents. I mean, everybody wants to be the five talent person because they think that's better. No, it just means you have more responsibility. So the master, Jesus, in this context, has entrusted you with something. And it was each according to his own ability. Have you ever stopped to think about why did he, how did he know to give the one guy five and one guy two and one guy one? Well, I think it's because they had a track record. They had history. They had a, a record of what they did with what they had been given in the past, right? And so it says each according to his ability. And here's maybe the most powerful thing you need to understand today. This word ability in the Greek is the Greek word dunamis. It's where we get our English word dynamite. And it's used often in the Bible, in the New Testament, to describe the work of the Holy Spirit in you. What God is saying is that you are full of explosive potential. You are full of explosive potential. It doesn't matter what they said about you at school. It doesn't matter if your parents weren't able to instill that in you. It doesn't matter what you see when you look in the mirror. When God sees you, he sees unbelievable, powerful, explosive potential. And he wants to give you opportunities to explode in. <laughs> he wants to give you opportunities to expand and become greater in. And that's what this story is about. And so it continues. It says, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. So again, the Bible is clear that yes, Jesus came into this world. He died, he rose again, he ascended into heaven and he is coming back. Again, regardless of your theology on this, the basic premise is that you are given responsibility and one day you will have to give an account for that. And that might be terrifying for some of you, but today I'm gonna to show, you, show you, it doesn't have to be terrifying at all. As a matter of fact, it can be an adrenaline shot of God's power to do something great with your life. To turn your life from the mundane into a life that matters. A life obsessed with possessions and stuff that rots and just transformed into something that's eternal. This is the gift of this story. So the one with five bags of gold, the five talents, the one who is given the most responsibility, the most opportunity comes back and he says, master, you entrusted me with a lot and I did something with it. I multiplied it. I took those opportunities. I took those moments. I, I, talk, I took those, those uh, windows and I utilized them for something better. And so this is the first investing principle. You gotta start with what you have. You gotta start with what you have. See, I think about the guy with two and the guy with one. They, they could have spent the whole story complaining. The one with one probably did. They, they, they could have been complaining about, oh, I didn't get as much as them. Why did they get all the breaks? Can I help you with something? I'll tell you why people get all the breaks. Because they make the most of the breaks they get. They're not luckier than you. Oh, they may have different opportunities than you, but it's those who leverage their opportunities for something greater that get more opportunities. It's how it works. It's real simple. You wanna climb the ladder? Let's use total secular language for a second. You wanna climb the ladder? Then you be the very best at whatever rung you're at. And I promise you, someone will ask you to go one rung up. So you have to start with what you have. In, in terms of money, since this is what that series is about, it means that you begin now thinking about tomorrow. You invest in things that matter. You ask yourself the question, when I, when I get to a certain stage in life, what will I will have want to have accomplished or what will I want to have? This is, but you, this is the important part, but you have to start with what you have. It says the one with five and the one with two immediately, immediately invested it. And why is that important? Well because of compound interest. So again, let's just talk about money, even though this series this sermon isn't about money, it's a, it's a base, it's an analogy, it's an example of our life. So let's talk about compound interest for a second. Let's say you decide, you know what? I, I need to start investing so that my future can be better than my today. 
And so you're gonna make a sacrifice and you're gonna put $200 a month under your mattress. I don't recommend this strategy, but let's just say that's what you did. And so you do that for $200, uh, $200 a month for 35 years. At the end of that 35 year period, you'd have $84,000 set aside. That's pretty good. That's not bad. But imagine if you could invest it at 3% interest with compound interest, that same amount of money would almost double to about $150,000. Now, Imagine, and again, this interest rate is so obscene right now. That you, if, if you can get 12% somewhere, please let me know. I want to invest with you. Uh, but 12%. Imagine you could do 12%. Well, then that same amount of money becomes $1.3 million. You say, well, who cares? Why are you telling me this? Well, I'm telling you for two reasons. It's layered. The first reason is because I want to make sure that you're in a position to win. Here, here's, here's what the Bible talks about when it talks about money. The Bible wants you to make as much as possible, but not for you, so you can invest in the kingdom. That's the second layer of this, that there is a compound interest when it comes to money, but there is a compound interest when it comes to your time, your talent, and your treasure. Let me explain it to you this way. If you're raising a child and you have a lot of little deposits, they skin their knee and you take a moment to stop all of your busy, all the busyness in your life and instead of getting frustrated that the child has now ruined your plan, you actually invest in that moment and tenderly teach or restore or heal. Or at nighttime when they say, mommy, scratch my back and you don't want to scratch their back because your TV show is on, Netflix is calling, but you choose to scratch their back anyway or sing them a song or read them a book. Or when they need you, you're there. You don't, you don't snap back at them. These, these deposits are compounded. And your relationship multiplies. It expands. It's the same with your health. It's the same with every area of your life. When you invest your life in the things that really matter, they multiply. Why? Because you have explosive potential. And when you invest in the right things, the return is astronomical. The return is great. So in response to this faithful steward, servant, who took the opportunity and multiplied it, the master says in the next verse, well done, well done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'm gonna put you in charge of many things, many things. It, it's like people come to church all the time. They say, oh, I really wanna be in a leadership position. And you say graciously, that would be awesome. We'd love for you to start by serving at the door. Oh, I don't serve, I lead. Well, you don't lead because leaders serve. If you can't be faithful with, with what is in front of you, how can God entrust you with more? It's the, it's the whole when then problem, right? Oh, well, when I have that, then I'll do that. When I have more time, then I'll invest in things that matter. When I have more money, then I'll give more generously. When, and the problem with when then is it's an endless cycle. As soon as you get the then, then you have another when then. Because money is just a reflection of your heart. It's a mirror. If you're cheap now, you'll just be cheaper with more money. It's true. If you're a jerk now, you'll just be a bigger jerk with more money. It's just the truth. So start with what you have. Start with what you have. Come and share in your master's happiness. Now, now here's, the, here's the bottom line of this story. Because Jesus is going to tip the scale. He's going to tip his hat at what really matters to God. And so, okay, what, is, what makes the master happy? What is this happiness that we get to share in? Well, you don't have to guess because Jesus tells you in another parable. In another parable in Luke, he tells the story of a shepherd who has 100 sheep, and one of the sheep get out of the pen, get lost. Now, he still has 99, and so everyone around him is probably saying, you know, 99 is pretty good. 99%, that's a pretty good passing grade. Uh, that's an A++++. So why are, you just, why are you happy with the 99? But he's not, because there's one who's lost. So he, at great risk to himself, leaves the 99 and goes after the one. And here's how he explains it. When he finds the sheep, he brings it back. 
And of course, this is an analogy of, of all of God's children that he loves us, but he's after those who don't know him, who don't have relationship with him, who haven't been transformed by his power. And so he says, I tell you in the same way, there'll be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner. And I know that word has a lot of connotation, most of it negative, but in the Bible, it just means someone who has yet to find who he was created to be or she was created to be. Someone who's living in a life and a direction that's opposite of the very best that God has for them. And so it says there'll be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. That word simply means to turn around. It means you're headed in a direction and you realize, you know what? This is a dead end street. There's no way this is bringing happiness. All the lies the world told me, false. My self-sufficiency isn't cutting it. I need God. Repent just means to turn around. And there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. So in this story, we see that the master invests in people, which begs the question, if that's what we're supposed to do with the opportunities that we're given, how are we doing? I want to talk a little bit candidly for a moment about something that really moves me deeply. It's the reason that I do pretty much everything that I do. And it's rooted in a simple principle that I want you to win. I just want the very best for you. And I may not know you very well. I might not even know who you are. Watching online, you may be watching from another part of the world and we've never met, but you need to know that what motivates and drives me is this deep desire to see people win. And I just know that we win when we do it God's way. It just works. God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. And so this church family is committed to doing whatever it takes to be a part of the master's happiness. And that means seeing lives transformed. And we constantly have to push back against the lies of our culture that say, oh, Central, they're just trying to be a mega church. That is nonsense. Oh, Central, it's just about a big building and lights and sound. That is nonsense. That is a lie and I know where it comes from, and so do you, because we are a church family committed to helping people win by finding Jesus and living in his way and walking in the victory that he died for. That's why we are here. And so it's why when we ask you to invest, we are, we're gonna ask you to invest your time and your talent and your treasure Yes, we're gonna ask you to, to take sacrifices and do things that are outside of your comfort zone, but it's because it matters, because people matter. Recently, we hired a new staff member for our next gen team, and it was such a victory because just a few years ago, this young lady who is full of joy now walked into this place completely broken and shattered. She was broken by the lies of this world. She was broken by her own self-thoughts and doubts and fears. And in her own words, she walked into this place giving God one last chance before she ended her life. That day, something happened in this experience. There was a prayer that was offered and that prayer spoke to her at a deep, deep level. And she walked out of this place with hope that maybe, maybe God could change her life. And he did. And just this past April, she was baptized and now she's living her life committed to helping the next generation know him too. When I think about investing in things that matter, I think of one of our hosts, the beautiful, wonderful people who sacrificed their time, some of them, most of the morning here with the blue shirts who came to me after, I think it was the first or second sermon in this series and said, man, you, this is so good. You gotta tell people this because it's changed me. Her story was she came into this place, a single mom going through a really difficult separation, broke, literally, had $25 to her name and was challenged in this place to trust God 
and I'm not saying this is for everyone, this is just an example. Again, whatever, don't, don't feel coerced or manipulated by any of these stories. They're just true stories of real people who are here today. So she felt like that day she was supposed to trust God with that $25. Even though it was the last, she, was a, she had a week left and she had no more money to pay the bills. So she decided to do that. And in her own words, God began to reveal himself as provider. As she began to trust him more and more, opportunities began to expand and new jobs and new resources. And she was able to buy her own house. And now she is married and serving on this team. She is one of the most joyful people you will meet because she tapped into this exponential potential. That when you live fully in the kingdom of God, you invest in what God invests in people. There's never too much money or time or talent taken. It is a gift. It is something you understand and you share in your master's happiness. See, because I don't see chairs. I see you. I see chairs that need to be filled with more people but I see you. I don't see a big empty building. I see that once these chairs are put away today, hundreds of kids are gonna come into this space this week. And gonna, through sport and dance, in our dance studio and in our volleyball program and all the other things that we do, our childcare, our youth programs, our junior high and young adult programs, lives are gonna be changed. The one story that really gets me is the, uh, I had the opportunity to coach one of these teams on a Tuesday night here. And <laughs> kind of reluctantly, I'll be honest, because my, my time is busy, but I came and one of the kids who plays on that team um, wanted to come and see me at church. Showed up on a Sunday and said, hey coach, I came. That's what matters. Because we live in a world that is completely broken and shattered, that tells you that your identity and your value is in what you possess, what you own. And the problem with that is that you'll never own enough. You'll never be enough by that broken system. This idea that your value is attached to your accomplishments or what people think of you, it is a broken system. And today, Jesus invites us into a new way of thinking that I want to transform you and I want to teach you how to invest in people. Because that's what matters. That's the only thing that matters. When I'm dead and gone, the only thing that will matter and live on is the deposits I put in people's lives. And I just wanna be a good and faithful servant. I don't know if I'm a five, two or one talent person. It doesn't matter because it doesn't matter what you have. It's what you do with what you have. A good friend was worried about me recently and suggested that maybe I stop coaching volleyball because I had so many other commitments. And I was tired and, you know, I was having one of those days where you go, like, does it matter? And I remember in that moment having a pretty aggressive thought, but I just shared it anyway. I said, you might as well take a knife out, cut my heart out. Because these kids, they need someone to believe in them. And I may not be the best coach and I may not always get it right and sometimes my anger gets in the way, but I'm gonna fight to let those athletes know there's somebody who's fighting for you and that your value isn't an accomplishment. Your value isn't simply the fact that God made you. And when I get that opportunity, I'm gonna let you know, I'm gonna come alongside of you. I'm gonna cheer you on every opportunity. God, if you give it to me, please let me leverage it for things that matter. Those conversations I should have. When someone asks me, what do I believe? You see, 
the servant with the one talent, he was motivated by fear. And so he buried his talent. He put it away. But those who invest in the kingdom of God recognize that you gotta start with what you have. You have to start today, no matter how small. And that short-term pain is worth it for a long-term gain. Because in the end, what you and I will be held accountable for is whether or not we invested in what really mattered. And in this story, the man with the one talent, the one responsibility, the one thing, let fear drive him to bury it, to sit on it, to settle for mediocre. Oh, it wasn't like he lost it. It wasn't like it was a loss to the master. What did the master care? He has so much money. Why does he care? But listen to the story as we continue. And so it says, then the man who had received one talent came and he said, master, I know that you're a hard man. See, because when you believe that God is out to get you and it's all about rules and obligations, that's exactly what you'll believe. You're a hard man. And you harvest where you've not sown, true. And you've gathered where you've not scattered seed. The master isn't going to dispute this because God is a miracle working God. He pulls off the impossible all the time. But I was afraid. And so I went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you. He didn't get it. He didn't know the master's heart. He thought he understood the master, but he, he only got it partially right. He didn't understand that everything God does is that you and I, you sitting here right now, you watching online right now, could know this amazing love, could experience it for yourself and be transformed. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So you know that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. You know that, right? So then, well, then you should have at least put my money in deposit with the bank so that when I returned, I would have at least received it back with interest. You should have at least done something. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And at this point of the story, you're like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> like, why so angry? Why, like, almost, it almost seems irrational, doesn't it? It seems disproportionate. Like, really, what's the big deal? Come on, you got it all. Why do you care what I do with my life? Why do you care? And I'll tell you why. Because when you don't live in the God-given potential you have, you rob other people of living in their God potential. When you refuse and you sit on your talents and your time and your treasure, thinking that somehow by protecting it and hoarding it that you're gonna honor God, he gets angry because it means someone else isn't going to hear this amazing message. And so in this context, we use it often in the terms of money, but I don't think it's talking about money. For whoever has will be given more and in abundance. I think if we believe the Bible, that God is love, and we choose love every day, and we see opportunities to infuse God's love in our school, in our workplace, in our home, in our neighborhood, in random encounters, when we begin to see how can I infuse God's love into everything, how I spend my money, how I spend my time, the talents that God has given me, and some of you are so ridiculously talented, but it's buried in the ground. When you can do that, when you begin to express God's love in every opportunity, the abundance is love in return. That's it. That's how it works. So as I was writing the conclusion 
I had to ask myself some questions, and they're hard questions. And I know today is a tough, direct message, but it has to be shared. Because it mattered to Jesus. And so it should matter to us. And so the questions I wrote, first of all, Bill, what weight has God entrusted to you? Maybe you're here and you feel like you're the one talent guy. And you wish you were the five talent guy. Stop wishing to be the five talent guy and just be the best one talent guy because the one talent guy, if he had invested, would have become the two talent and the two talent would have become the five and the five became the 10 and the 10 becomes 20. It's just the way the kingdom works. What opportunity is right next to you? What friendship? What partnership? What opportunity is actually sitting right next to you? And what opportunity is waiting for you outside these doors? For if this is just what it is, one and an hour and 15 minutes every Sunday, then we've completely missed the point of the master's heart. This is to fire us up so that we go out there with this amazing message and we seize every opportunity. Sometimes it's in the words we say, sometimes it's in the acts that we do. Sometimes it's just in being present. So what weight has God entrusted you with? What talent has he given you? And it's not about money and it's not about skill, but it is those as well. For you, some of you, you need to start leveraging your resources for the kingdom. Not your kingdom, because your kingdom will crumble and fall. You'll be broke. But you need to start leveraging them for things that really matter, investing in people. Second question I had to ask, what are you doing to steward it? Um, that word steward is just an old English term for making the most of it. A master had a steward, and that steward was responsible to make sure the master had all of his needs, all, all the things that needed to be done accomplished. And so what are you doing? What are you doing to be a part of the kingdom of God? And then finally, and this is maybe the most sobering one, and I'm only asking it because I had to ask it of myself, and it's in the story, you can't miss it. What will be your answer when he returns? What will you say? How will you give an account for what God gave you? And so, this series has hopefully been encouraging and inspiring. Uh, I know that doesn't mean it's always easy. Sometimes we have to shoot straight, but what I hope you walk away from this series is better equipped to understand that everything you have is a gift. Every resource, every breath, every opportunity is a gift that has been given to you. And if you're willing to let God infuse everything that you do, this ability, this dunamis, this dynamite power that's inside of you could actually have an impact that would change the world. It would start by changing you and it would start changing those around you and the ripple effects could go who knows where. And so we've been challenging you with a survey and yes, it is directed to our resources, our money, because money in our culture is the greatest indicator of who we trust. It's the greatest indicator of how we invest and what really matters to us. And so if you haven't already done so, or if you did you know, download it, but you didn't fill it out, I wanna encourage you, please do this. And there's a couple reasons why it's important. One, we just believe that there are still greater days ahead. We actually believe that there are greater risks that we could take. We could do more. And again, not, not to, out of obligation or duty, but out of a passion to see people know this amazing God that we serve. And so I don't want you to go upstairs later, but if you, on your way out, if you turn around, you'll notice that the seats are in the balcony. That's great. That is worth celebrating. And the reason that's important is because I believe there's going to come a day when we won't have enough room on the floor to fit everybody. And I believe that Christmas in Niagara, a great opportunity to invite people to just come and be a part of this community. We're gonna fill every one of those seats. And so because of your generosity, I need you to know that you've invested in people. 
I need you to know that when you invest, you're investing in all those kids who are right now in our kids' programs. And if, if you want to have joy, just stand outside and watch them run out with their crafts and their memory verses and ask them, what did you learn today? You're investing in the next generation. If you, if you don't believe me, come on a weeknight between 6 and 10 as hundreds of kids are coming in and out of this building. You're investing in people. When you give, you're investing in the kingdom of God. And we're accountable for that too. And so if you could take that survey and just let us know, it would help us go, where are we at as a church? Are we healthy? Are we in the right spot? And so maybe some of you today want to be a part of this in some way, and all those options are there for you. But this isn't about what we need. It's not because we're desperate. We are not. We have a God who has put explosive potential inside of us. This is about you, actually. This whole series has been about you and how to break the mindset that's holding you back and find your full purpose. So to go back to the very first question we asked, do you ever ask yourself, is what you do matter? Do you ever go lay your head on the pillow at night and go like, what am I doing with my life? Do I have great news for you? Tonight, you can lay your head on your pillow knowing that you invested in the kingdom of God, whether it's with your time, your talent, or treasure. Because when you invest in people, you cannot fail. And so let's do that together. Let's be that kind of a church and that kind of a family. And so today, I want to bless you. I want to bless you with the truth that you're amazing. <laughs> I don't know if anybody told you that today, but you're amazing. But not because of you, but because of what God can and wants to do through you. I bless you with the reality that every one of you in this room has been given an opportunity to impact the world, not just in the temporary, but in eternity. I give you blessing that when you leverage that and you understand it, it's not about giving, it's not sacrifice. It's a joy because you're participating in what God is doing in the Niagara region. And I hope you dream with me and have vision big enough for me that we believe together that we can be a part of God changing the Niagara region. It's not going to be some government system. It's not going to be some monetary breakthrough. It is going to be God's people being light in the darkness and salt in a world that's lost its taste. It is going to be you and I together partnering with God and saying, whatever you give me, I want to be a part of what you are doing. I want to see lives transformed and every life that is transformed is our victory because God shares it with us. And I want to be a part of that. And I want you to win. And I believe in you even when you don't believe in you. And so I bless you with the truth that you've been given opportunity. And if you leverage that opportunity for the kingdom, <laughs> there is not enough words in the English language to describe the joy that you will find. So I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.